Earlier, I spoke to Nadia Nadim. She is an Afghan Danish footballer who knows all too well about life under the Taliban. Nadia's family fled Afghanistan after the Taliban killed her father in 2000. Our conversation began with her memories of growing up in Afghanistan. Before the Taliban, we had a great life, uh, safe environment. You know, my, my mom, dad provided the best life for us possible. And then after the Taliban gaining power and my dad was killed, um, all that time was with a life with a lot of fear, horror, and we literally trying to survive. Um, so mm. it's, it's almost two movies, two different ones. Mm. How did you get out of Afghanistan? Um, we got out, uh, we were probably among the more fortunate ones. Um, so my mom sold everything she had, we had, and found a human smuggler. Um, got us out to Pakistan and from Pakistan with fake passports. We were transported to first Italy and then behind a truck to Denmark. So, wow, this long, is a long way. This is a remarkable journey. I got to ask you, how did you get into football? <laughs> Um, I say it's, I always say it's probably like a bit fate because the refugee camp that I was staying in in Denmark um, was just beside these amazing football fields and a football club, and that's the first time I I got to see that girls actually did play football, did sports, mm. and right away I fell in love with the game, and since then I've never really left the ball. I want our viewers to get a sense of your success. You you moved from playing football eventually in Denmark, to PSG in Paris. There you won the French championship last season with the team. That is amazing. How was that? It was big. You know, it was the first time in the club's history that, that we won the league. Uh, and that was the reason I signed with PSG. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to win the league with them. Mm. Probably one of the biggest achievements. Look, it's been quite the summer for you, uh, winning the... French Championship with PSG only weeks later, the Taliban taking over power in Kabul. What's been running through your mind when you see these images coming out of Afghanistan now? At the beginning, I wasn't really understanding what was happening. It felt like a deja vu. Uh, and, and, and I've never really thought that we would come back to this. It feels like history repeating itself. Mm. Um, so that way, it, it was confusing. I couldn't understand it, and it was upsetting to Russian, like you know how 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 they're gaining more power, and now that they're actually running the country, um, yeah, it makes me makes me upset, makes me angry. You know, I don't I don't think they deserve it. I don't think that a uh, terrorist group should have that much power. Well, they have just announced the formation of a government, which is not at all inclusive. It has no women representation. In fact, the, the Taliban have said women in Afghanistan will be banned from playing any kind of sport that, quote, exposes their bodies. You must be concerned about the future for Afghanistan's sporting teams, aren't you? If you're not allowed to play music or listen to music, mm. how do you think sport is going to be some, in the composition? It's just a bunch of cavemen who are trying to control people by fear. I don't see I don't see any sports uh, in the future in, in Afghanistan. How does that make you feel? Like upset, it upsets me. You know, born in a country where where you're not even allowed to play a sport, which is like such a such a basic thing. Like it doesn't harm anyone. You were just having fun. You're just like enjoying yourself. You're actually trying to improve your health, trying to learn. Why is a bad thing? I don't understand it. It just makes it doesn't make any sense in my brain. And and then that's that kind of people who are the, who have the power to run a country. What does that say about the country? And where does that leave the country's future? For the thousands of Afghan women that have a dream to play sport in Afghanistan, what's your message to them? You know, usually my message is very clear. I always say, no matter how hard the times are, uh, you should one should never lose hope. Just always try to feel or think that it's going to change and you're able to change it for your mindset and your positive attitude. But right now, I feel like 
saying this, it doesn't really hit hit home <laughs> because for me, even when I'm trying to imagine the future, it doesn't, I don't see any light. This is very dark. Um, the only way I can see them like having a future in terms of where they are actually allowed to do basic stuff, basic human rights, is if the Taliban really loses up because of the pressure of the international community mm. um, or they somehow are removed. If you had a message to the Taliban themselves, what would it be? Educate yourself. It's very simple. Like, there's so many questions I have, and I think I would tell them, yeah, educate yourself. See how the world works around you. Um, and maybe they will change their value, values. But I, I doubt that.